Hello and welcome to another edition of my house art tour. So today I have a painting and I have a poem to go with the painting. Um, so it all began when I got this book in the mail, which is Perfumes, The A to Z Z Guide by Luca Turin and Tanya Sanchez. An amazing book, so full of perfume reviews and theory about scent, and it's an amazing book. Um, so I learned so much from this book, um, and I was given a message that goes with it uh, that said, um, there are no unrelated facts, only complicated underlying structures, which is a... Um, quote from Luca Turin, the writer, uh, one of the writers of this book. Turin divides a novel theory about how the sense of smell works, and he also writes uh, reviews perfume, and it says to read three to five perfume reviews and extract an image from each. What are the underlying structures that connect these images? So I went through the uh, task of choosing, I actually chose, I think, seven or something perfume reviews. Uh, the first one I read was called Angel Violet by Terry Mugler, which is a French designer. And um, he was kind of a crazy designer in France, really interesting, um, brilliant designer. And um, for some reason, I think there's a connection between Terry Mugler and Ushino, but I could be wrong about that. Anyway, uh, the review says, Perfumer Francoise Caron was faced with a difficult task here, namely to arrange the rapidly shrinking violet, or shrinking note of synthetic violet and the huge accord of angel, which was the original scent in a way that both would be perceived at once, which is a bit like trying to cover an 18-wheeler with a purple handkerchief. Amazingly, it even works for a few minutes, after which the violets are flattened and left behind like floral roadkill. Three stars. So that was the first review I read. And um, I should clarify that I don't wear perfume at all anymore. Like, I have sensitive skin, to scents and I don't wear perfume although I really like essential oils sometimes because I like the smell of them but I can't put them anywhere near my legs like I can't have any soap with essential oils even if there are pure essential oils that are cut down with um, like some kind of an oil I can't have it because my legs get angry I get so angry I do not like any kind of scent, so I just use pure glycerin soap, basically vegetable glycerin, organic vegetable glycerin soap. So I'm not this kind of person, but I do sometimes use um, like essential oils to repel spiders and stuff, because I've got a, a window upstairs, and on the other side of the window, is like spider heaven for some reason these huge spiders just hang out there all the time and i don't know the only thing i mean sometimes they crawl in to, through the window so i spray the window down with, with and when i'm outside i have an outside rug that i sit on in the backyard and i spray the outside of the rug with with essential oils so that um, you know, the ants don't come on my rug and, and I don't have spiders on my rug and stuff like that. Because I'd rather not, you know, like, the, it. I mean, it smells great and it repels insects. And it's very, like, what they're saying about scent being such a an essential memory uh, trigger is really excellent. I think it's important. To notice that and um, I like I liked perfumes before but I just feel like I, I really know that 
I'm really better off with very pure products and I, I, there's just um, a limit to how much I can do as far as like synthetic scent is concerned and stuff. It's just not good for me to be involved in that kind of stuff. You know, I know, I mean, I used to be. I used to have perfumes. There's a lot of stuff I used to do that I don't have any, I mean, I don't go recreational shopping anymore. I don't have this, I don't know. I guess I'm just different now. Anyway, but I love these perfume reviews. They're so entertaining. Okay, here's another one. Le Jasmine by Anna Gotal. There's an excellent jasmine wasted here in a combination of grassy green and cream white floral marred by a woody amber with a sharp peppery character. Two stars, metallic jasmine. And then they talk about aqua blue, classic ice blue. These are chosen at random by Combe. Incorporated. Minty herbaceous. When are more mysterious things men... One of the more mysterious things men used to do is upbraid the top layer of the face with blunt razors, staunch the bleeding with a styptic stone, and then splash 98% alcohol in the whole seeping mess. This daily rite of passage ensured that they were ready to go out and sell mainframes. I was waiting for that primal scream feeling, but none came. No cuts, razors have moved on, and the smell is nowhere near as good as it was. Ah! So they talk a lot about how because the perfume industry is clamped down, has been forced to clamp down on toxins, that a lot of the recipes are, are not as good as they used to be. Like there are some chemicals you just can't use in perfumes anymore because they're toxic and volatile and carcinogenic, I think. And uh, one of them, I guess, was in Aqua Velva Classic Ice Blue, but they talk about it a lot. Like, um, they talk about Fahrenheit, which I talk about later, how that recipe changed. And, and uh, so I guess it's for the best, you know. You can't really sell toxins to people. It's not nice to do that, and people have enough trouble with their health, you know. You just can't sell them toxins. Okay. And just now, I was thinking the voice of uh, the Aqua Vel the, um, the voice of the perfume reviewer is very sarcastic and sardonic. And it reminded me of a voice that I was uh, reading at the time, which kind of comes into my poem, because uh, there are a couple of writers who I was reading at the time who, was really, who were really affecting me. Okay, ultimate clean. These clean scents are like a party game. Name that household product. However, this one is not vile, just tawdry. I'm pretty sure that the top note is dawn, the dry downy dawn downy. It generates a sense memory of warmth up to my elbows and resentment against my mother. Can be used to fool dates into thinking you're domestically inclined. Clean alt. Okay, CK1 summer, floral grapefruit. Eye-wateringly dull, fresh grapefruit that smells like shower gel. Okay, and here's a perfume that I actually used to wear, Jean-Paul Gaultier, which smells like Coca-Cola and Dr. Pepper kind of to me. Uh, one star, so that's not so good. Jean-Paul Gaultier, classic eau de toilette, fruit oriental. Gaultier's classic may stand forever as a perfect triumph of packaging over content. The striking bottle of the shape with the armless feminine torso, like the outfitter's dummy outfitted with frosted brown corset, is a direct copy of the famous torso bottle of the original Shocking by Schiaparelli. The timeless fragrance composed by Jacques Cavalier, who knows better, rivals Armourage in terms of diabolical intent, cloying notes of canned orange sections and syrup collaborate with powerful powdery vanilla musks to overwhelm. It mag manages amazingly to be both pungent and thin, like the far end of a cheap dry down. And it was a huge hit. I kind of like this perfume. Uh, Amirage is interesting in this 
uh, book because the reviewers hate this fragrance, even though they list it as one of the greatest fragrances of all time. Uh, so they have a frequently asked question. They say in their frequently asked questions, um, why is Amirage given only one star when um, when it's listed as one of the greatest scents of all time? Hold on, hold on. Here it is. It says, Why has Amirage got only one star when it's in the top ten list at the back? Amirage is a genius work of perfumery, utterly unrecognizable, memorable, technically polished, and spectacularly loud. But we hate it. In the end, we figured this was a fair thing to do. I really like these people. Okay, and so then I went on to Opium by Yves Saint Laurent. A friend of mine, you know who you are, gave me Opium, the body lotion, and I loved it even more than I ever loved Opium itself. I didn't really like it. I thought that was a little strong. But the body lotion was amazing, and she knew that the body lotion was amazing. She had a lot of different um, bottles of it, and she gave me one. Uh, so this is what they say, five stars. This one is interesting because I had, oh yes. It's very woodsy. It's like sandalwood. Five stars, Spice King. Opium illustrates better than any other fragrance the peculiar phenomenon of love followed by rejection, known as fashion. It is unquestionably one of the greatest fragrances of all time, not only in terms of phenomenal success, but in having deserved it. Yet I would hate for anyone if anyone wore it near me today. Why? Suppose you wrote down the basic requirements for a great fragrance. Top of the list would come distinctiveness, then radiance, then to keep homage like mutants out, some sort of working relationship with natural smells. Opium has the first two in spades and passes muster on the third, but so does Shalimar, Chanel Number no. 5, and a host of other greats. What is it that makes opium so dated when, the fragrances, when fragrances 50 years older are fresh as paint? I believe the answer hinges on the faults of its qualities. The comparison with the almost exact contemporary and involuntary twin Cinnabar is instructive. Both were inspired by the same vision right down to the country, China, and the color of vermilion or Cinnabar. There is something peculiar about its spicy oriental orientals being made almost entirely of dry down materials. They lack time evolution, the arc of fragrance that gives it life, and it feels like a broken wristwatch perennially, perennially stuck around 10 p.m. There the resemblance and cinnabar was rich, warm, and fuzzy. Opium said one thing and one thing only with tremendous force. While this was the most cogent statement ever made by balsams, one does tire of it. This, and not the quality of its raw materials, is what made opium smell so fascinatingly solid in the 1980s, and now makes it smell tiresome. Okay, and so I really thank the person who prompted me with this. Uh, let's see. Oh, one more exclamation by Koti, which I actually wore. Uh, three stars, powdery rose. My junior high smelled like this, as perhaps junior highs have ever after, so I was afraid of having trouble being objective through the fog of nostalgia. No trouble. This was a loud, crude, crudely charming, low-budget version of Sophia Bojman's Hallmark, a rose tricked out with a big, sweet, woody, fruity smell of violets, which started off with uh, Paris, Yves Saint Laurent. Ah, uh, that, okay, and so, remembering that fragrance. 
And then I looked at Fahrenheit's idea, which I used to purchase for people, but apparently it had something in it that is no longer admissible in the perfume world, which is not very good. Fahrenheit should be named after a different temperature scale, maybe Ramure or Rankine because it's unrecognizable. It used to be a great citrus leather in the manner of Bellamy, overlaid with the gaseous, hisseous, and most diffuse note, it diffuse, diffusive note of violet leaf in all of perfumery. Acetylenic esters have now been severely restricted. Triple bonds smell wonderful but are chemically reactive, and what's left is a kind of Bellamy, except Bellamy itself has been messed with and Fahrenheit is arguably better than the modern version. Either way, nothing to celebrate. Uh, okay. So it used to be better. Anyway, uh, so I love this. And it also said how the perfume industry doesn't keep records, generally, or hasn't kept records about things that are swapped out or, you know, who made the perfume, who's the perfumer, who's the perfumer, who's the person mixing the stuff, and, like, the history of the things, that sort of history is not really well kept. And um, that's, a, that's something that these perfume reviewers really want to correct. And uh, so these are things I'm not really ever going to buy. I'm not ever going to buy perfume again. All I will probably buy is essential oils. And I actually have a lot of essential oils, so I don't really need to buy them either. I have a little spray bottle with some perfume. I mean, I've got some rosemary essential oil right here. It's nice. I, mean, I like essential oils. They're pretty, pretty cool. Anyway, I'm really careful with what I do. And I actually don't, there's a lot I don't, I mean, I don't even participate in fashion the way that I used to. It's not the same for me. Like, uh, I think, it, I don't know. Anyway, I'm just not the same kind of person. Anyway, I'm supposed to write a poem about these things. And at the same time I was, I was reading these reviews and everything. I was also with another one of my friends reading a novel for a book club. And or I was in the middle of two book clubs reading novels. And, um, and then I read two novels in a row and I had the experience of realizing that both of the authors, uh, the, these two female authors had, had their same uh, start in writing um, as contest winners, like for women's magazines writing essays. Uh, so that was very interesting, and it sort of struck me. I don't like traveling either, but um, these ladies, they won trips to big cities to write for uh, famous magazines and they were given a whole bunch of gifts and so on. So I was kind of playing with that idea and imagining that that was happening to me. Although I don't want that to happen to me exactly because, or anything I describe here because I really dislike travel. And I really just want to stay home most of the time and work and stuff like that. But um, I guess maybe I'll grow it. Maybe I'll start traveling later in my life. I'm not sure. But right now, I just... Uh, the thought of it is terrible. But anyway, so this combination of the perfume reviews, this idea of perfume... Although I didn't want to get into the perfume structures or anything, which I think I might maybe later in a different poem, I don't know. But this idea of contest winning and the perfume and how I feel very removed from that entire fashion world. 
although I know a lot about like designers and fashion and I do watch fashion shows and they make me cry they're so beautiful sometimes and I love that whole thing I still have a very removed feeling about me buying clothes <laughs> other than secondhand clothes and wearing any kind of perfume or cosmetic that has any synthetic um, like ingredients and things like that. Like I'm very careful. Anyway, so it was like I was imagining uh, myself as someone else in a way, and that's what this poem is kind of about. And so I um, I decided to kind of create a character that would um, win a contest that would be me, but it wouldn't be me. And um, so I came up with this idea of um, this character being a rabbit. Because rabbits would never buy perfume, but maybe they are talented in some way, I don't know. Anyway, I have, so it's not really a poem, it's more like a, it's more like a short, like an FO article, kind of, but it begins with a poem. Anyway, um, it is called, uh, what did I call it? I called this poem Oh, I've written it down, I just can't remember. Wild Rabbit Makes Good, that's what I call it. So the painting that goes with this is a painting of a rabbit that I did a long time ago, but recently I've been working on it. And it's a, a painting that I actually made a pretty big mistake on, like in terms of materials, because I put ink in the paint, like I mixed acrylic with ink, like a red ink, and um, it was so frustrating because I couldn't cover up the red ink, like even if I, I waited for two weeks to see if I could cover up the red ink, and I couldn't, and so every time I painted with it, the red ink would seep to the top and it would make it look like the rabbit was bleeding, <laughs> which is a very bad thing. I didn't want it to look like that. So anyway, I just put the painting away completely for years. And then this year I got it out and I uh, decided to see if I could correct it with like a blue tone. So I turned everything that was um, like I just took some cool colors to it and see if I could um, counteract the ink. But the ink had dried up, so after a while, your mistake goes away. And uh, I was able to correct the, the color and, and make it sort of a cool toned um, rabbit picture. And so I was thinking about animal testing and rabbits in the perfume industry and how this rabbit would be a good fit because I was trying to correct what looked like a deadly situation for the rabbit and rabbits are very sensitive and so and I'm sensitive and I'm a rabbit you're the rabbit the wood rabbit and so this uh, painting is called Wild Rabbit Makes Good and her poor situation has been corrected with cool blue tones and things like that. So um, that's the basis of this poem story. And so uh, Wild Rabbit Makes Good. So here we go. We're going to we're gonna do it now. We're going to read the poem. And I've got a little video that shows the, 
rabbit picture. Okay, Wild Rabbit Makes Good, Part 1, The Poem Dignified and careful rabbit, for whom there is love in my heart, the transparency of the core, the corner and focal point, the ballpoint of the blue and black pen and the pencil, all cherished needs, we take more paint and definition and some heart opening and magic, restraint and care in the skies is Restraint and care throughout. Part two, the story. Contest winning small town rabbit on once in a lifetime world tour beginning with a month long New York internship and perfume scholarship declares, this place is bigger than I ever imagined. The persistent woodland creature submitted her entry to the essay writing contest for a charmed third time, describing her talents, interests, what it would mean to her to win such a fantastic prize, and a list of her highest aspirations, which included being an artist, performer, and decorator. The small town rabbit, along with 12 other talents of various creative expressions, were recently welcomed into high society through the winning of a world trip beginning with a stay in New York and a lucrative internship in a syndicate of fashion-oriented magazines. Don't give up on your dreams, she, said, she says, when asked how she felt about being in the big city and her arrival. The old employer, her old employer is interviewed by phone. Do you mind sparing her for a few months? Well, sure, her boss remarked truly a man of few words. She seems to have talents we didn't know she had, he said. In the talent portion of the submission, the judges had a good-natured chuckle when the intuitive and mystical rabbit held a Victorian-style seance. Talent makes you look at things differently, the sporting panelist said. She wasn't much to look at at first, but it was a situation like when the movies went to, talk to talkies. It's like discovering the actress we used as an extra had the best voice. We were happy to include her among the winning selection in the end. Since then, she's become a favorite with the audience, who wonder what crazy things she will think of next. Of course, all con contests, winners, and participants are given a professional makeover, a new hairstyle, and wardrobe because the benefactors have to look like they know what they're doing. Now made over in the current fashion, she's one of 13 good-looking, small-town, ordinary, salt-of-the-earth guest towns of a major media and cosmetics conglomerate. The rabbit now trades in her lanyard at her work-a-day job for, for a few months to experience a new start and opportunities uh, that will change her life forever. This will include such exotic experiences as a stroll with an easel at the world's most historic sites to draw and paint in situ alongside artistic peers. By day, she may be interning with the greatest decorators. By night, she is learning the ropes on the world stage. Soon to move on to the next stop of the tour, the 13 fast friends and newly discovered luminaries will soon be sent on their, to their first stop for a scholarship abroad in a specially selected school to foster their individual talents. This particular rabbit participant laughed gamely when asked about getting up on stage. She demonstrated, she gave a demonstration of her talents, first jumping and flipping at her feet like rabbits do, and then reciting a poem. She entitled the dance in the poem, responding gracefully to a deadly threat. Then she gave a lovely speech, and the audience wondered about how she remarkably talks, just like a live human person. The producers of the show opined, now these 13 talented, hardworking individuals, all of whom are now the toasted artistic ingenue of the day, and pursue their dreams of traveling the world. They'll attend a Japanese game show in a Shinto temple. They'll travel in the outback. They'll caravan across the savannah. This is the kind of trip full of opportunity and in in introductions that will change these working lives forever. 
The talented group is ushered in and out of rooms in expensive hotels. The whole production is exciting, smile-inducing, heart-moving, accompanied by music and cameras. The whole production is fast-moving, slick, industrial, and at least behind the scenes, heavily secured. All of the prizes are awarded in public in lavish displays designed to, to dabble, dazzle uh, the participants in the press. At night, valuables and as yet unawarded gifts are alarmed and guarded by security person personnel and cameras on timers. To the rabbit, every place is a thrilling place, particulated down from the gratitude in her heart and the sweet expression on her forest-aspected face that is set off by the lights, camera, and action, brought there of her brought there from her own necessity to contrast with the slick interiors of the reality of the expenditure. There is the heart-beating thrill of the camaraderie, the heart exchange, and the promotion. Let this select an eclectic, talented group of 13 from all walks of workaday life talk about what they might think about things for a change. Clearly enjoying herself, genuinely enjoying the big city. The shy woodland creature talked about when she was younger. She spent a lot of time with her friends, the other wild rabbits. But she knew there was always something a little different about her. When asked about her interesting wardrobe choices, she talks about how much she loves vegetable colors, flowers, and wooden jewelry, and seems to go on at length about growth organization and garden life, to which the facilitators of the prize shake their heads, grin, and announce, it takes all kinds. Someone in the audience asks if she's a native rabbit species in her home area, to which she replies in the affirmative with qualifications that she begins to elucidate, but which are interrupted by applause. All in all, what is most important is that all of the participants know that we appreciate all of you more than you could know, declares a heartily moved and enthusiastic producer to more applause. Just like any other person would be, the rabbit is naturally grateful for the opportunity, and there is a consensus after listening to her speak so articulately that the judges made the right decision to include her. The interviews of the night are winding down, and there is a, an expensive dinner to be had at, the, at a place the modest, hard-working band of 13 would have to save up for. Their hard-earned money is not necessary here. The, um, the funds have been generously given by the wealthy sponsors. There is a palpable feeling that these outstanding talents from all over the country are going to make the world of art and beauty a different place with their unique voices. At home in their jewelry box, in her jewelry box is a wrist badge from her workplace, traded in now for a cruelty-free lab-grown diamond tennis bracelet that figuratively instead of literally opens doors. One of the many expensive gifts from the magazine sponsors, which she modestly and appropriately says she dares not wear very much in case she might lose it. When asked if she enjoys the hotel's expensive lodgings, she answers effusively. The hotel has declared that the unusual rabbit supplies has supplies delivered and that she produced multiple written articles for her new writing inter internship. The hotel staff say, even though she has access to a new wardrobe and the finest food, She's, uh, she's up all night producing records of her stay and gathering herbs from a nearby green space and organic food from local health food stores, which she has the kitchen prepare and gathers interesting clothing from secondhand shops and thrift, thrift stores. But the woodland creature says she's used to hard work and she's just cushioning her new city slicker routine with the country comforts of home. We knew she was a little quirky when we took on this one, say the producers, clearly responding gamely to these reports with a healthy good nature. 
When asked for a tour of some of her prizes, the rabbit graciously opened her rooms to the cameras to show the gold, platinum, and enamel artist brushes, the new cruelty-free and mining-free synthetic onyx and quartz products made in Japan, and the mother-of-pearl hand tools provided by a generous art sponsor and manufacturer of drafting supplies and practical yet beauteous studio hardware. Questioned about the brand new cars that were given out to the prize recipients, the rabbit, in her quirky signature bohemian way, said that she gave the car to her boyfriend because she prefers to walk and take taxis as she is for now, as she for now lives the life of the mind. She went on to declare that I am locked into a wooden destiny. Although now uh, I have new knowledge to learn and new tools, and I have some new ground to cover, I have four streams of expression on the landscape. Some smells are good for you. Some smells just remain in your memory like floor wax. In all things, genius will come in handy eventually. When we asked about her current projects, and the rabbit declared with a glitter in her eye, I'm writing a poem about cows. The interviewer responded, Ah, fine, that's fine, that's fine, and went on to say, But last year, two of the recipients of these prizes were actually a pair of gifted, hard-working Highland calves who gamely opted to immediately adopt the city style and install their favorite, their expensive sponsor-given gold artisanal earring prize sets on their pasture-raised ears to which the rabbit winked and pointed out her newly piercing artisanal wooden bangles, high up on her pink ears in the style of a city flicker. A well-known New York correspondent asked about her current official assignment, and she said with great excitement that she's writing a poem based on some perfume reviews that is almost finished, hopefully to be included in the international fashion issue of an artistically-minded fashion publication. In a final question for the furry contestant, a well-known and respected career female journalist asked what was the number one lesson she learned from the first part of her Around the World Prize. The rabbit quoted Luca Turin, the famous perfumer review, reviewer, the perfume reviewer, to say, there are no unrelated facts only complicated underlying structures. And also, to quote another famous perfume reviewer, Tania Sanchez, all pleasure is connected. Reading about how shoddy record-keeping is in the perfume industry and how ingredients are wordlessly swapped out and perfumers are often unnamed and uncelebrated, the rabbit now on a new life path and career footing inwardly vows to keep easy records of her own professional work and to talk about it as if it's already if it's already an if, as if there is already an audience for this even though she points out with modesty that might take some time she writes down at the beginning of her article which uh, while she is chewing on an expensive organic carrot she found at the market in the way of opening remarks that scent is good for mystical transformation, transportation, and repelling spiders, and sometimes she uses essential oils for practical purposes, although she usually washes them off when she knows she will be in contact with other animals. The reminisce, uh, then she uh, reminisced that maybe once she had enthusiastically kept and a perfume collection of her own, but she doesn't know what happened to it. Another bite from the organically grown vegetable. The delicate, fleeting, beautiful friend, Wood Rabbit, thinks briefly about family members with chemical sensitivities and how even her own skin reacts and itches from expensive shower gel in the prize kit she tried the first day. So she gave it, and most of the other products away to a well-dressed stranger at the park with a cloud of scent drifting through their clothes. The rabbit ultimately only kept anything that was vegan, scent-free, and organic. She thought 
thoughtfully opened each perfume and read their reviews and pretending to speak the language of a generation. She wrote a long, sweet poem about angel violet, metallic jasmine, aqua belva salesman, styptically staunching bleeding to sell mainframes, perfumes that smelled like cleaning products, the smell of cola, and uh, amazing true inner landscapes inspired by scent. The true arts are like that, something that you don't really need, but you want and feel like you need, something that undeniably makes life better. So a figurative need becomes something that you literally need. Literally now means figuratively. That's the consensus space as it has been so far. The rabbit carefully recapped the perfumes. And later that day, while snacking on some wild grasses at her new portable easel in the park, smilingly gave them away to her audience. Out of a sober acknowledgement of gratitude for the good nature of her producers and hosts, the opportunistic rabbit did not mention the unsavory history of rabbits in the cosmetic industry. In the poem, which her, yet her hosts already bashfully acknowledged, now that everyone knows all about that anyway, the producers were anxious that she felt accommodated and cared for. The rabbit didn't bother. She was, after all, having the time of her life, thankful in every way for the diverting parade of novelty and newness, the ability to work, this new working milieu, the friendship, the opportunity to express herself. She thought wistfully, about what she would tell the other wild rabbits in the backyard at home who had raised their eyebrows at such big city antics. As usual, they got a kick out of her offbeat topics of conversation around the delicious glossy tufts of life-giving and green, emerald green, clean emerald green grass. So that's the poem, and and that's the painting. And the painting is about six feet by four feet or something. It's a pretty large piece. And um, so, I mean, I like perfume when I come across it. When I have customers who have perfume on, I actively like that, you know. And uh, I think people who want to wear perfume should be able to wear perfume if they want to. Um, You know, except for... You have to be careful of people with sensitivities because some people are super sensitive to scent. But anyway, just thinking about these perfumes makes me happy. And uh, I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. Thank you for joining me for this tour. I'm uh, doing a kitchen design right now, which is really fun for... Um, me and um, I'm excited about it I'll probably have more information about that later and I'll do a video um, let's see the photo show I totally want to start from scratch I completely changed my mind about everything I did so far and I want to take it all apart and do it all over again so normal for me anyway that's Anyway, uh, what else? The novel is coming along really well. I've started reading it to myself, and um, that's a really good way of uh, editing it. <laughs> editing it. And so I've been editing it that way. I think I'm going to release it as an audiobook, but maybe I'll make it into a real book too. I don't know. The main thing is that it's out there. And um, what else? Oh, carpentry. I didn't get a carpentry job yet. So at least I have decorating jobs where I'm designing things that carpenters can build. And uh, probably will do some, I mean, I've been doing a lot of cutting and and stuff here by myself, which is fine. I mean, all things take time, and sometimes, 
sometimes people do you a favor when they don't include you in their plan. And, you know, that's just the way it is. I have to look at it. I have to look on the bright side of everything. Uh, also, I'm going to be doing a lot of... I'm trying to get as an improved reader on some uh, reading sites for astrology and, um, and tarot reading and stuff like that. And um, so I might post some reading videos. I did a Spanish language uh, astrology reading the other day, which was cool. Uh, my Spanish is not great, but I managed it anyway. And uh, um, and I want to make an ad for my readings and stuff like that. So I think I'll make an ad for that. Anyway, things are going really well for me. Like, um, I love this time of year, and. Uh, my backyard looks fantastic, and I've been eating the greens from the backyard, which are really what I'm comfortable growing right now because all the fruits and vegetables are eaten by the rabbits and the squirrels. So I either I have to get some chicken wire or something or a greenhouse, or I have to just eat um, the greens. But the greens are great. I have uh, mint. I have nipple wart, which is a great uh, nutritious herb. Kind of has a bland taste to it, but it's pretty nutritious. Then I have mother wart, which is a nemenagog, and it's also like pretty nutritious. Then I have um, a lemon balm and burdock, which I've been eating a lot of, and it's excellent as a blood cleanser and detoxificant it's amazing so if you ever see that it looks just like it's like burrs what makes burrs the plant looks like um rhubarb it's like turkey rhubarb and it has burrs on it that's what you want burdock take the leaves and cut them up and put them in your your pot your soup and stuff. It's really good as a blood cleanser. And um, so that's what I've been doing. That, those are the things. Is there anything I have been doing that I haven't mentioned? Probably, but that's always the case. Um, I've been doing a lot of art actually recently. I had to draw up plants for this kitchen, and um, I might do a video about some of the art that I'm going to do in the kitchen, like uh, that I I think I'm going to do a mural, which, a very simple mural, but um, I want to maybe do a mock-up of it before, and I'll do a video about that. And uh, maybe I'll talk about the color waves and stuff, because they're exciting and the feng shui of it all. Anyway, I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. Thank you for lasting through this very long video. And I wish you all the best and lots of love to you. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Okay.